speaker is founder and medical director at the Warrenville Eye Care and LASIK Center. She's an assistant clinical professor of ophthalmology. She wears many hats. Many of you know her from women in ophthalmology. Uh, her topic tonight, again, keeping in this theme of looking forward to the future, is neurotrophic keratitis, painless challenges, and future treatments. Lisa. Thank you so much, Tony, and thank you, Namrata, and the uh, International Conclave and the Cornea Society for this wonderful invitation. So I am uh, delighted to speak to you about neurotrophic keratitis and where we're uh, at and looking for in the future here. Let me just advance the slide. Great. These are my financial disclosures. Uh, so in this uh, brief discussion today, I want to uh, review some of the prevalence and stages of neurotrophic keratitis, uh, discuss the pathophysiology, burden of disease, and etiology of NK, the, what we know now, and more things that we know now, and then uh, give a brief overview of the current and upcoming treatments for NK. So the prevalence of neurotrophic keratitis is really, it's very interesting because it's incredibly difficult to determine. Uh, initially estimated to be less than 1.6 out of 10,000, uh, but when we look at data from the most common conditions associated with neurotrophic keratitis, uh, you see higher numbers. So in herpes simplex, about 6% develop NK, in zoster, about 12.8%, and post-surgical nerve damage results in uh, about 2.8% develop. So uh, uh, when they looked retrospectively, an epidemiologic study suggests a higher prevalence of 11 out of 10,000. Uh, but the truth is that I really think that NK is often uh, diagnosed delayed, the diagnosis is delayed or missed entirely. Um, and we know this from the patients that we see coming into our office uh, and uh, unfortunately how severe those cases are sometimes. So I thought we would go back to the basics a little bit and review what we know about the pathophysiology of neurotrophic keratitis to understand what treatments we have now and what treatments are coming in the pipeline. Uh, and so you're gonna have to answer this on your own, scout's honor, uh, more scout in the presentations. Uh, the cornea is the most innervated tissue in the human body. Uh, how many nociceptors per millimeter squared are there on the corneal epithelium? Is it 70, 700? 7,000 or 70,000. And if we were live or you're in person, I'd play some Jeopardy music for you, but you're just gonna have to hum that in your head now. So uh, the answer is actually 7,000 nociceptors per millimeter squared. Uh, and the cornea is indeed the most densely innervated tissue in the human body. Um, the nerve bundles, um, as you probably all know, just a little review here, um, enter the cornea at the limbus, move towards the center below the anterior third of the stroma, penetrate Bowman's layer, and create this dense network of nerve fibers between Bowman's layer and um, basal epithelial cells. And that forms what we know as the subbasal uh, nerve plexus uh, and has the characteristic um, pattern of nerves that we see running 12 to 6, um, 11 to 5, et cetera. Um, so keeping that in mind, what can cause neurotrophic keratitis? And it really is an abnormal sensory innervation anywhere along the neural pathway. So it can be a trigeminal lesion um, from trigeminal neuralgia surgery and aneurysm and meningioma, uh, ciliary lesions, uh, tumors or orbital surgery, lesions on the cornea, that's where herpetic disease comes in, or chemical injuries, uh, chronic contact lens wear, chronic use of uh, topical medications, um, or things like a brainstem lesion or an ocular nerve lesion. Um, Panretinal photocoagulation has also been associated with neurotrophic keratitis, as has cyclocoagulation. So really any interruption along those pathways. Uh, so what happens now on a, a basic science pathophysiology level when you discuss disrupting corneal trigeminal innervation, two things uh, occur. One is it impairs trophic factors. So trophic factors, you want to remember, those are things like neuropeptides, like substance P, and it decreases the neuropeptides that are there. So that's going to result in corneal epithelial changes and impaired corneal healing. Simultaneously, you're gonna, you can impair the trigeminal reflexes. So that's gonna impair the lacrimal glands release of growth factors and nutrients as well, contributing to decreased tear production and blink rate, which is further going to impair corneal healing. So those things together, 
the corneal epithelial changes, impaired corneal healing, and the decreased tear production and blink rate result in spontaneous corneal epithelial breakdown, which is going to cause a neurotrophic keratitis that we're all aware of. And this becomes important when we start looking at the available treatment options and what is in research in the pipeline and to where it fits along in this pathophysiology. I think it's, uh, it's telling to look at the nerves uh, on the cornea um, with uh, neurotrophic keratitis. Um, and this is indeed from uh, one of the seminal papers on that showing the normal nerve distribution, then how the decrease in mild NK to moderate NK to severe NK, where you can barely see the nerves on the surface. A brief review of the MACI classifications, uh, stage one, rose bengal staining of the inferior palpebral conjunctiva, decreased tear breakup time, increased mucus viscosity, and punctate corneal epithelial um, staining that can be mistaken for dry eye. And then we proceed to stage two, where you have epithelial defect that's usually that oval um, surrounded by a rim loose epithelium and edges can become smooth and rolled. Um, and you can start getting some anti-inflammatory reaction. And then finally, stage three, a corneal ulceration, uh, stromalysis and melting and perforation. So uh, the best opportunity to reverse ocular surface damage by neurotrophic keratitis is with early diagnosis. And I participate on expert consensus on the identification, diagnosis, and treatment of neurotrophic keratitis led by Reza Dana, um, last year published in um, BMC Ophthalmology. Uh, and in reviewing it, was set up as a Delphi panel. So we reviewed um, over 700 uh, projected cases of patient characteristics for neurotrophic keratitis. And the one thing that came up over and over again is the corneal sensitivity testing. And so that's really something that um, as cornea specialists, I know that we all do, uh, but it's something that we need to continuously emphasize in our teachings um, to the general community to help decrease uh, or help decrease the number of cases and help uh, earlier identification. Uh, so the treatment of neurotrophic keratitis, uh, typically with preservative free artificial tears, um, topical antibiotics, if there's any defect or large contact lenses, amniotic membrane has been shown uh, to help uh, improve healing as well as tarsorophy. Corneal neuronization has become a more popular uh, technique uh, in the US, um, involves multiple specialties um, to try and re innervate the cornea. And then um, most recently over the past few years, uh, with the recognition of nerve growth factor, again, going back to the pathophysiology, understanding epithelial proliferation, differentiation, and um, how that uh, is critical to the survival of corneal sensory nerves, um, the recombinant uh, human, human nerve growth factor, Snedrin, um, was uh, evaluated and approved in Europe and the US, and that's now a routine part of my practice um, for neurotrophic keratitis patients. And then looking at future directions, uh, research studies have now focused on developing novel treatments for neurotrophic keratitis and looking at several polypeptides, including those growth factors and the neuromediators um, that have been proposed. So if you recall, that was um, so one of the initial impaired trophic factors, uh, looking to uh, provide those trophic factors early on um, to decrease the progression of neurotrophic keratitis and hopefully involve an early resolution. And so studies are currently being conducted across uh, several entities on topical treatments with substance P and IGF insulin-like growth factor one um, that have been demonstrating an effect on epithelial healing. So it'll be very interesting to see where that moves um, here in the future. So uh, just a, a kind reminder to, if you don't think about NK, you will miss NK. We know the most common causes uh, are herpes simplex, zoster, um, intracranial space occupying lesion, diabetes, and neurosurgical procedures. The best opportunity to reverse ocular surface damage is to identify it early, um, which is a great reminder for corneal sensation. Um, and then knowing some of these options to treat NK, uh, modifying our treatments to include the neuro, the newer options, and perhaps incorporating those sooner into practice, as well as realizing that the pathophysiology is being uh, well studied now or better studied now, and we have new things coming along the way that may even uh, help earlier in the process. So thank you very much.